Hey there, guys. So uh, tomorrow I'm going to be uploading a video about my preliminary uh, results for the sulfur dioxide content at ground level because it seems that during these tremors there is a massive increase of sulfur dioxide emissions, which is emitted by volcanoes, also carbon dioxide also. But uh, mainly around here and definitely up here, definitely in Yellowstone. So I'll be uploading that video tomorrow. But as an intro, I just wanted to read this one article for you guys real quick before I start doing the other video. Gas and water chemistry directly relates to the amount and location of magma inside a volcano. Volcanic gases escape through fumaroles, porous ground surfaces, and active vein vents during different phases of a volcano's lifespan. As magma rises toward the surface, when it erupts, and even as it cools and crystallizes below ground. When rising gases encounter groundwater, the water acts as a filter and scrubs the gases from chemicals, thereby changing the chemistry of the water. And also, let's say there's a large hydrothermal system, it's going to take in a lot of that sulfur dioxide, so it'll be very hard to tell the exact sulfur dioxide emissions if there's a hydrothermal system. Like with Yellowstone, some people are like, oh, the content is really low, you know, there's nothing to worry about. But the thing is, is the hydrothermal system will scrub the sulfur dioxide before it reaches into the air, if you know what I mean. Scientists can learn a lot about changes to the magma system within a volcano by, one, measuring changes in the emission rate of certain key gases, especially sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide, and two, collecting and analyzing water samples to look for chemicals, such as hydrogen chloride and hydrogen fluoride, both easily dissolve in water, that indicate volcanic gas has been filtered by the water. Carbon dioxide may indicate new magma from deep below. CO2 gas separates from magma deeper than other volcanic gases. If increased CO2 levels are detected at the surface, that may indicate new magmas entering the volcanic system. By regularly monitoring CO2 at volcanoes, scientists can easily detect those increases as well as decreases, which lead to a greater understanding of what is happening inside the volcano. CO2 can also be hazardous. It can collect in soils and can cause trees and other vegetation to die. And if it does not dissipate quickly when it leaves the ground, it can collect in low-lying areas to fatal concentrations. And CO2 is usually measured with an infrared sensor. These instruments measure the concentration of CO2 in the air or in a volcanic plume. Kind of like what earth.noschool.net does. Which I'll put a link to this article and to this app in the description box below. Sulfur dioxide, SO2, is released from a volcano when magma is relatively near the surface. If SO2 is detected at a non-erupting volcano, it could be a sign that it will erupt soon. Okay, but what about where there's not supposed to be any volcanoes? Like, let's say right here? Because check this out. Let's go back a day to where the tremors were. And I'll be doing a video about this tomorrow. So it's okay if you miss some of this. But check this out. Notice right here how there's stationary plumes right here. Like right here. Right there. And you'll notice that they're pluming this way. Obviously into the direction of the wind. But if you can tell, it's coming from the, literally coming from the ground. Watch as I go forward in time. Watch. Notice how they're stationary? You see that? And especially right here as well, right down there. You see that? That is coming from the ground. And that is because of magma. That is what happens when magma gets closer to the surface. And it never used to be like this. Whoops. It never used to be like this, ever. So, what the hell is going on? <sighs> if SO2 is detected in a non-erupting volcano, it could be a sign that it will erupt soon. By monitoring the amount of SO2 being emitted from an active volcano, it is possible to calculate the amount of magma that is supplying the eruption. However, SO2 easily dissolves in water. See, remember? So if the volcano has abundant surface or subsurface water, like a hydrothermal system, it becomes difficult and sometimes impossible to determine how much sulfur dioxide is actually being released. So over here, people are like, oh, you know, because Yellowstone's right here. This is Yellowstone right here, right in this area. So people are like, oh, there's not that much gas emissions. But the thing is, is yes, we are seeing gas emissions. But since there's a large hydro hydrothermal system, about, probably going to say 90 to 95% of the sulfur dioxide is being scrubbed by the water. So we won't see it as well. Up here, there's probably no hydrothermal system. So that's why we are seeing a larger increase up here. But you can tell these stationary plumes, this is volcanic in nature. I don't know how or why. Because six months ago, this wasn't here. They, these plumes weren't here six months ago or even a year. And you'll see that in the video I, I will do tomorrow. Especially right here. Look at that. 259, the content. 288, 106, 
the volcano at Hawaii puts out about 400 to 500. So it's almost like an erupting volcano. And a fumarole are vents from which volcanic gases escape into the atmosphere. Fumaroles may occur along tiny cracks or along fissures. So if these are fumaroles, it could occur along a tiny crack or a fissure. But if you notice, this is the same angle as this mountain range right here. This is right on the edge of it. So could there be a crack? Maybe the tectonic plate is moving? Because whatever this is seems to be connected to the earthquake swarm at Yellowstone in June and the recent tremor that was felt from Alaska to Virginia. And see my last video, the scary long period tremors, if you haven't seen that already. They may persist for decades or centuries if they are above a persistent heat source or disappear within weeks to months if they occur atop a fresh volcanic deposit that quickly cools. But when SO2 is injected into the atmosphere, it quickly forms potentially hazardous sulfate aerosols, as you can see here going along the wind, the wind patterns. They can cause respiratory problems to people downwind of a volcanic plume. If injected into the upper atmosphere, they can cool the climate for years by reflecting incident sunlight back to space. So, personally, I'm not really a believer in global warming, personally. Uh, and even if it was happening, I doubt it would be because of the cars, you know, and our carbon footprint. I don't know. But that's not the case. But what if they, the people who really hardcore believe in global warming, are doing this to cool the Earth? Because people have been trying to find ways to cool the Earth for so long because of Al Gore's global warming crap. And so what if this is a way, what if they're poking holes in the surface to cool the atmosphere? And they're purposely doing this. I wouldn't be surprised. I, I don't know. It's just a theory. But I just want to have a little intro for my video tomorrow. And I'll probably upload it tomorrow evening sometime. So I highly suggest you read this. I will put a link in the description box below for this article. And for earth.noschool.net, this application right here, and you can see right here, see air, ocean, chem, particulates. We got particulates right here. And then chemicals. Here is, what is this? Yeah, carbon monoxide. CO2 and SO2 are released by volcanoes and magmatic activity. So there's, you can kind of see it a little bit. You can kind of see it connected there. But you guys should definitely do some of this work on your own. And... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's been a pretty long day today, and I still have not gotten a reply from USGS, uh, and I have not checked my other email account for the Volcanologist reply, but I will when I'm done with this video. Thanks, guys, much, and God bless.